for the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Gratitude. To have a tongue that praises Allah. To have a heart that's appreciative of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's bounty. And to have a body that is patient in hardship. And to have a wife that doesn't betray you with regards to your wealth or herself. These are the four things. That if a person has them, they have the good of this world and the good of the next world. The good of this world, and the good of the next world. So Alhamdulillah. There are many, SubhanAllah, Allah Azza wa Jal, He's created everything. The material and the immaterial. And from the immaterial, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has created love. And Allah Azza wa Jal has made us has created us for himself. Yeah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from the human being ikhlas. They have only been ordered to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
with full sincerity. Uh, like Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu tkhulu fi silmi kaffa wa la tattabi'u khutuwati shaytan. O people of Iman, enter into Islam completely. Full sincerity, no compromise. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. And from what Allah wants from you, besides the fact that Allah owns you, you are a slave of Allah. You are property of Allah. Allah has purchased you in exchange for Jannah. And in fact, the idea that Allah needs to purchase us in itself is ajeeb. It's from the generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah owns you by simple right of the fact that He has created you. That alone. This alone is sufficient for Allah's ownership of you. Because Allah made you. That's why Allah owns you. Simple. And then after that, Allah fed you. Allah grew you from a small child. Allah clothes you. Allah gives you all that you have is only from Allah. Because all that exists is only from Allah. So there is only Allah. You can only take from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no one else to take from. There is no one else to provide for you. So Allah owns you. And you owe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from what Allah wants from you is He wants your love. And that if you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and why shouldn't you love Allah? Even if Allah didn't, even if you didn't owe Allah love, and even if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't own you, and even if you had no obligation towards Allah, isn't his ihsan? Isn't his generosity? Isn't his gentleness? Isn't his giving with you? Isn't that sufficient for you to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And that the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a seed in the heart of a human being. And that seed grows. And it becomes a tree. And it bears fruit. And as the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes more intense in the heart of a believer, two things become intense with it. Two things become intense with it. Which the first is that you love Allah's obedience. If you love Allah, you love Allah's obedience. You love the words of Allah. You love everything associated with Allah. Just like SubhanAllah, you love your child. So you begin to love everything, many, many things associated with your child. That's the effect of emotion. An emotion into a, a directed at a certain thing radiates out and affects many things. So much so that if a person has hatred of another person, that he would dislike that even that the person's name is mentioned. Even the name invokes an emotional response. The same way when somebody loves somebody, even their name invokes that love. Even though the person themselves is not there, but just the remembrance of them uh, invokes that love. So, the love of Allah, as it becomes strong and more intense, uh, by necessity, you must love Allah's obedience and all that associated with Allah. And coupled with it, and coupled with it, you hate all that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates. Because good doesn't exist by itself in this world. Uh, it comes with evil. And good is defined as Allah has defined it. And evil as is evil as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has defined it as evil. So we hate the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should hate it for ourselves and we should hate it for others. We should hate it for others. Just like the Prophet said, Unsur afaka ghaliman aw madhum. That come to your aid, to the aid of your brother. Whether he is an oppressor or oppressed. So the Sahaba said, Oh Rasulullah, we understand if he's oppressed to come to his aid. But how can we come to his aid when he is the oppressor? So the Prophet ﷺ said, You take him by his hand and you bring him to justice. You stop him from the, his, the oppression that he is committing. That is helping him. That is aiding him. So in the same way, we hate the oppression itself, but we don't hate the oppressor. 
We hate the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we don't hate the one who is committing that disobedience. We always have a place in our heart for all of mankind, that how all of mankind can be exposed to the mercy of Allah and come to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ that we have only sent you, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as a rahmah, as a mercy for all of mankind. And that we have to have a balanced understanding of this mercy. That this mercy is not only reserved to joining that which is right, but it also encompasses forbidding that which is evil. It doesn't only encompass the part that is sugar-coated, but it also comes with the part that is bitter. Because this is the nature of a human being. Huh? We have people who respond with kindness, with sugar-coated words, and some whom you have to be strong with huh? to stop them from harming others and to stop them from the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to have this balanced understanding. So we must have an intense love in our heart for Allah. An intense love in our heart for the obedience of Allah. An intense hatred in our heart for the disobedience of Allah. And according to the intensity of those, you know the intensity of your iman, of your faith itself. They indicate, one indicates the other. They have a relationship with each other. And that, as the Prophet ﷺ, he explained the virtues of love and the dangers of love as, as well. And he said, a man came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, Mata sa'a? When is the day of judgment? So the Prophet ﷺ said, Ma a'adatta laha? What have you done to prepare for it? That's the more important question. The important question is not when is it, but what have you done to prepare for it? So the man said, I did not do much of salah and fasting. And now, this specific statement, I did not do much of salah and fasting, needs to be taken out of our understanding of context and put into the context of Sahaba, the companions of the Allah Anum. That when a Sahabi says, I did not do much of fasting and zakah, that means there is no question about his fara'id. Nobody was missing out on their fara'id. Everybody was, was fulfilling the rights that was due on, uh, on them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, it doesn't excuse me that if I'm missing out on my fara'id, simply that I should uh, claim that I love Allah. No, 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 no. The claim doesn't work like that. The claim is only proved with action. That is the proof of love. تعصل إله وأنت تظهر حبه That you disobey Allah and you claim that you love Him. وإن في الهاد في الأفعال بديع this is a very strange thing from amongst action. This is a strange action. That if you were true in your love of Allah, you would obey Him. That the one, the lover is obedient to his beloved. And we have to always watch this love. Where is it directed? Do I love my desires? We all do. And we're always tested with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding our desires. We all love our desires. But we have to strive against ourselves. Make jihad against our nafs. Struggle against ourselves. Struggle against our desires. And always take that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves over that which we love so that we can be loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All created only so that we can be tested. These emotions, only a system, only a design so that Allah can test you. Allah can offer you that which you... Allah has put that love, those desires in your heart for that which Allah may not love so that you can overcome them and in it gain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said that, O Rasulullah, I have not gained much. I have not done much in preparation for the Day of Judgment. In other words, I'm doing my fara'id, but I'm not staying all night in tahajjud. I'm not fasting every other day. But I'm doing the best, I'm doing my minimum. Huh? So the Prophet ﷺ, and he said, but 
the main one thing I have hope for is that I love Allah and His Messenger. I love Allah and His Messenger. So the Prophet said, and you will be with those who you love. And in another hadith of the Prophet it mentions that a person will be with those who he loves on the day of judgment. So look at your heart, analyze your heart. Who do you love? How, whoever you love, that's who you will be with. So, how do we know? How can I find out who I love? It's about who you imitate. Who do you emulate? Do you emulate Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Do you emulate the companions of Ridwanullah alayhi? Are they, when you hear the stories about Rasulullah, do you become overwhelmed with emotion? You know, subhanAllah, one brother, he was, he was explaining that he was, he is, mashallah, he was from Mecca, and he was giving us a story about a very simple man from a village in Pakistan. And the brother, he was the one saying the story. And he says, I was saying the hadith to the brother that gives the story about how in Mecca, the Quraysh, they came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa they spat on him, and they threw dust on him, and they threw dirt on him, while he was saying, Ya ayyuhal nas, kulu la ilaha illallah kishtuhi. All people say, La ilaha illallah, you will be successful. He was saying, the simple Pakistani villager, when he heard this, he got overwhelmed and started crying. That how is it anyone could throw dirt at Rasul? How is it that anyone huh, could have ill feeling or disrespect to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is the question. Huh? Do we ever get overwhelmed with emotion in this way when we hear the stories about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? When we hear the stories about the Sahaba, about the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, do we feel that love for them? Do we have that love for them? Do we feel hurt if anyone should insult them? Or is our heart dead and it doesn't respond? These are all indicators for a person that they can use to determine what my level of love is for Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <laughs> إن الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى says وإذا حييتم بتحية فحيوا بأحسن منها أو ردوها إن الله كان على كل شيء حسيبا الله سبحانه وتعالى says that whenever you are greeted with a greeting then you should respond in the same way or in a better way and that Allah سبحانه وتعالى takes account of all things so the next section is yes we spoke about Signs and proof of love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and its implications. And then, how about love between each other? Right. And how about, and what does it translate into in terms of akhlaq, in terms of manners, and dealing with others? That we may, dis, we may hate a specific disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a result of our love for Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But in no way, should that translate to having our hearts become devoid of mercy? See, no matter how wrong something is, should always have mercy for the one committing it. We should always have akhlaq. We should always have good manners in the way that we present a specific item or discuss a specific item with others. Because rarely does it benefit us to react with harshness. In some situations, it is necessary. But majority of the time, huh, it's not what will benefit us. And it's not what will solve the problem. The Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned, مَنْ رَأَى مِنْكُمْ مَنْ كَرَى فَلْيُغَيِّرُهُ <coughs> Whoever amongst you sees an evil, he should change it with his hands. Many times we read this hadith, and we, get, uh, we, we think that it means we should stop it, or we should negate it. But the hadith says, فَلْيُغَيِّرُهُ <coughs> He should change it. 
If not, then he should change it with his heart, his tongue, and if not, he should change it with his heart. So many a times, directly opposing something, depending on the situation, is not necessarily the best, best method for changing it. It depends. Huh? It depends. Huh? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. So how is it huh, that we develop love amongst each other? The Prophet ﷺ, he said, لَن تُدْخُلُ لَن تَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةَ حَتَّى تُؤْمِنُوا That you will not enter Jannah, you will not enter Paradise until you have faith, until you have Iman. That is the key for entering Paradise. وَلَن تُؤْمِنُوا حَتَّى تَحَابُوا And you won't have Iman until you love each other. Until you love each other. أَوَلَا أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَى شَيْءٍ إِذَا فَعَلْتُمُوهُ تَحَابَبْتُمْ Should I not tell you about such a thing if you do it? You will have love for each other. Afshu salam abaynakum. Spread salam between each other. And let your salam be full of warmth. Let it have love. Have a smiling face. Uh, the Prophet, you don't know, subhanAllah, how much salam does to break the ice and, and, and create bonds between each other. And the less we give salam to each other and the less we come to know each other, the more that we are likely to have hatred for each other. Because hatred is bred from ignorance, from not knowing another person. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal nas, O mankind, inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa unta. Allah is now delving into the differences between mankind. We have made you male and female. وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلَ لِتَعَارَفُوا We have made you tribes and races, races and tribes so that you come to know each other. So the purpose of diversity is to overcome that which is, not, is, which is unknown. And in overcoming that which is unknown, developing that love and mahabba with each other based on the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because all love based on anything else at most will end at death. That's the best that you can hope for it. That's the best that you can do. You can be as good as friends as you want or have as loving a relationship as you want, but that relationship must end at death and that is the best that you can hope for. And on Qiyamah, the only relationships that will stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will not melt away is that relationship that is based on Allah's obedience and that will love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That the relationship of blood between the father and son, that's such a strong relationship. Uh, the person will run from his brother and his mother and his father. He will know nobody. All the relationships of blood will be cut on the day of judgment. But that which coincided with the relationship with Iman will remain. That those people who have Iman and their children, the next generation also has Iman, we will join them with their children in Akhirah. And Allah says, إِخْوَانًا عَلَى سُرُورٍ مُتَقَابِلِينَ Those people who are brothers for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will make them on high couches outraised on the day, upraised on the day of judgment and in Jannah. So all those relationships which were based on the love of Allah will remain. And all those relationships which were not will fizzle away with the, with the difficulty and hardship of the Day of Judgment. Huh? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all tawfiq. Amen. And as much as possible, we should be very particular about forgiving each other. Be particular about giving salam huh? and smiling when you give salam because the Prophet ﷺ said لا تحقرن من المعروف شيئا ولو أن تلقى أخاك بوجه طليق do not belittle anything of good, even if it is to come to your brother with a smiling face. So smile at each other with love and give salam with love huh? and forgive each other. Always look for excuses for the other person. And in order to do that, you have to lower yourself. That's the only way to do it. Always what creates that, that hatred is to feel that I have a right. And he is trampled on my right. He did me wrong. And because he did me wrong, then I'm going to get him back. And I'll be doing a good thing in doing that. Right? But the reality is, مَن تَوَاضَعَ لِلَّهِ رَفَعَهُ اللَّهِ 
that the person who forgoes his rights and humbles himself for the sake of Allah, Allah will give him dignity and honor. He is looking to protect his own dignity and honor. That's why he wants to create a fight. But the hadith is saying, no, you leave the fight, you lower yourself, you humble yourself, Allah will take care of your dignity and honor. You don't need to worry about that. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's job. Huh? So may Allah give us tawfiq. Allah mahdina fi man hadayt, wa aafina fi man aafayt, wa tawallana fi man tawallayt, wa barik lana fi ma aatayt, wa qina sharra ma qadayt, fa innaka subhanaka taqdi wa la yuqda alayk, إنه لا يذل من نواليت ولا يعز من عاديت تباركت ربنا وتعاليت نستغفرك اللهم ونتوب إليك وصل اللهم على سيدنا محمد وأقيم الصلاة إن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعدكم لعلكم تذكرون